How's it going everybody? Gunner here and today I want to go over how to tie the bulkhead allspark. Now it's just a simple one step away variation from my allspark which is a, a pattern that's based off of Nicholas Bauer style flash boot flies for, for pike. And, and all I simply did is, is use a quarter inch chocolates body tubing material dam to splay a bunch of flash materials and hackles and put a collar on it uh, with a fish mask and pack everything between the two and it, it ended up being an extremely durable fly and of everybody who I, I've ever tied it for and gave it to it was always reported back it was their favorite pike fly they absolutely loved it um, and the fly uh, in the original state has, has accounted for numeral months Husky, um, but I really wanted something with a broader head, more water, water push, um, and more of that kind of true sucker, big, fat, round-bodied silhouette. Now this fly is the, the definition of bulk without bulk. It is going to have a, obviously some wind resistance with the shape, um, but everything from here back is just flash, very sparse synthetics, little dressing of hackle for counter shading, really simple fly and, and the way I want to show it to you guys and present it is without any of the dubbing brushes. So the original was based with dubbing brushes that I make myself and that you would have to make yourself and I want to show you the, the non-dubbing brushed version um, and it doesn't come off as clean and as you don't just wrap it and know it's done. There's a lot of smashing and distributing materials because they're slippery synthetics and we're using big threads that create, you know, ramps that everything slides down. So you really have to manhandle your materials, get after it. Don't let the material do anything you don't want it to and if it does, start over. It's not a big deal. Back it off and try again. Uh, but it's kind of the, the uglier version but the results are the same. And so you don't need to, to make a dubbing brush, you don't have to buy dubbing brushes or any of the gear. So this is how you tie the bulkhead allspark. Um, it did catch a muskie earlier this season in the pink version. It's a, it's a really fun fly to fish that's kind of downsized, you know, it's not massive. It's, it's a comfortable probably 8 inches um, and it has that just fat bodied silhouette that drives muskies nuts. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show this fly uh, in the Flyman Fly Tester swimming so you guys can see how it moves kind of in a steady state current situation and how all the hydraulics shape the fly. Um, but then we'll take it out fishing this weekend. Um, I'll be scouting some new water, so no promises, but I'll at least have some swimming footage. How's it going, guys? So I just tied up that bulkhead allspark in a ridiculously cool fire tiger combo. Um, if you want to know how to tie that, the color combo is listed in the description. So we're going to demo the chartreuse kind of lemon head, a uh, little pink fade belly, and that's what we're going to demo for the fly tying instruction. But uh, not only will that entire fly, all the materials and all the color combos be listed in the description, but so will the fire tiger option. So check it out. Time out. One last thing. I'm trying a different camera angle. I'm going to put you guys over the shoulder, so hopefully you guys can see what I see. Comment below if you dig the new camera angle or if you like the old school videos. Let me know your thoughts. So first and foremost, stepping up uh, the steel a little bit to a PR320 6-aught from AWREX Hooks. I'm going to just start my thread base and work it back here. The first thing that we're going to do is attach our Blaine Chocolates quarter inch body tubing in clear. Now your first time tying this fly I just recommend moving this back a little bit farther. <laughs> uh, that way you don't crowd the hook eye and you, you're more comfortable with the spacing as you get familiar with the fly. Now this spacing that I have, I'm going to tie this in roughly one inch back from my hook eye. So this is one inch back from the hook eye and I'm tying in a section of Blaine Chocolates body tubing in quarter inch that is uh, about one and three quarters, nearly two inches long. I just, I kind of always pre-measure it and that's how I get the same dome shape and size. Because this is slippery, I'm going to load up just a dab of super glue right there. Catch that, put down a nice little base. Now I'm going to hit that base with glue come forward, we're going to melt the tips of this and just force that backwards over top of itself. Get that lash down. I'm going to come in here and whip finish that off. I 
and then once again super glue that and you don't ever want that base to move that's why there's so many glue steps but that is your your body tubing placement and that is what allows the entire fly if you were to I'm gonna put this fly into frame here and fold everything back but that's what allows all of the bulk without any bulk if this fly is essentially a single station intruder that's on a hook and it's eight inches long <laughs> so that's that's basically what we're tying here so I'm gonna come in now with my thread so now that this is tied in, instead of coming in with a dubbing brush, which is how the original is designed, I'm going to show you guys how to tie it without the dubbing brush system. And we're still going to use the two identical materials, which are going to be Steve Farrar Blend and Big Fly Fiber. Um, and what you want to do here is pull out a, a small sparse hank of Steve Farrar Blend, and we're going to cut that uh, right into fourths. And that's about the length that I would normally do the core of my dubbing brush. And then I'm just going to put a little taper into it, but it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to lash this right onto the side of my hook here. And try to just get, you know, two or three loose wraps right there. And so it's all bundled up in one spot. And what you're going to do here is shove your thumbnail into this really aggressively. And all that bundle of materials is, is simply going to run away from your finger pressure. And you just chase it around and move it around again push it and pull it where it needs to go until you have a nice even distribution wrap that back towards that body tubing here then I'm going to come in with a push tool this is just a a big pen that's had the pen taken out of it and if you ram that back a few times pull that pull the fibers where you want them and then lash that down you can see I have what is essentially the core of my my dubbing brush now perfectly flared out I have uh, a little bit of taper to it so it's not just you know like straight cut fibers but I have some longer ones it's obviously nice and dense right here to help flare everything and give everything life now I'm gonna come in with some big fly fiber and you can use the straight package which doesn't have the curl and the curl package you can use either or the straights gonna be a little bit longer and you're gonna get just a little bit more usable fibers out of it. But I'm going to come and take a sparse amount. You, this is something you don't want to overdo. For me this is just accent and tone and it gives the illusion of some, some meat and bones in between the flash layers. Now I've taken white and I've taken pink and I'm simply going to blend the two together and before I, I do the blending I'm just going to taper the ends just again so I don't have any straight cuts. I'll try to show you how I blend this, but you can just fan it all out. Pinch, pull, separate, and put it back. Kind of roll it between your fingers a little bit. Pinch, pull, separate. Make sure you don't drop any fibers. Bring it back. So now here's my, my white and pink blend here, which actually came out pretty good. And I'll tie it in nearly 50-50. You don't have to work too much on I'm tapering that, but come back up, get two wraps, it's all bundled in the same exact place, we're treating it the same way we treated the, the SF, shove your thumb into it, and then I'm simply going to chase it around and make sure I like the way it got distributed from my, my fingernail and thumb pressure. There's a little clump right there, and it seems uh, tedious, this is definitely the most tedious part of the fly and that's just that's just what we got going on without the the use of our dubbing brushes so what I'm gonna do now is just like with the SF I'm gonna take a push tool and the push tool is gonna allow you to get this synthetic distributed all 360 degrees instead of kind of you know if you pull it to where you want it you'll kind of just inevitably just pull more to one side than the other and you won't get a nice distribution. Then I can even, your thread might slip off here so you want to go back and forth. Yeah, that was my thread slipping off. That's what happens when you got a big bundle of synthetics here. It was good that you guys saw that because it'll probably happen to you. That's okay. So I'm going to come down and kind of just build a, a little ramp here 
to stop that from sliding down and now I can tie up on that and force that back without my thread giving way. So you just make a little ramp. It's kind of, I try to do it without doing the ramp, but if you have to make a ramp, it's not the end of the world. Now that's our base. That's our, that's our illusion of bulk and, and you can really, I mean it's a lot of, <laughs> it's like two inches circular of diameter. Like it's a lot of meat, but there's actually nothing there. And the, the pink tones are, are kind of cool if you're fishing northern Wisconsin and northern Minnesota for muskie. It's, it's really good tannic watercolor. Now I'm going to come in with a Flashaboo blend. And if you've seen my videos before, you know I absolutely love Flashaboo blends. <laughs> but they're all solid colors. This is mint. This is actually a new color called Sharpie. It's absolutely ridiculously cool. This is a dyed pearl series in light blue. And this is pink. And I'm going to blend them in equal parts, four strands of each. And this is Magnum Flashaboo, so all 52 centimeters. So four of each at the full length, all 52 centimeters. And then I'll show you when we get there. So I'm gonna take all of that flash boo, all 16 strands, fold it in half, and cut it. So it's gonna effectively double my strands and it's gonna cut all the flash to about 10 inches here. And I'm just gonna taper one end and I'm gonna tie it in. About 80% of the fibers going towards the rear, 20% sticking up towards the front. And I'll tie it kind of on the side and allow the thread torque to pull it up towards the top and then I'll shove my thumb in it and I'm going to keep it all on top from the sides to the sides so it's, it's going to be perfectly veiling the back none of it on the underside here wrap back create a little thread valley and then I can pull back these half right here pull back that half up and over there and make sure that the 20 percent fibers are lean back where I want them. And this is going to create, uh, and we're just going to use this massive thread base to basically tie in the rest of the materials. We're going to put flash on the bottom, lateral lines, and saddle over the back. So it's okay to make a pretty uh, aggressive bump right there because that's going to be our, our tying platform for the rest of our materials. Clip that off to the side. Now I'm going to come in with polar flash. And this is color 2014. It's a really nice blended color, but it's predominantly opal, which I, I really like to have on the underside. You can use normal flashaboo, right? You can use accent flashaboo. You can use whatever you want. You could even use the magnum flashaboo that we used on the top. But something that I think is really cool to do when you use a, a different textured flashaboo, it kind of uh, separates the top from the bottom. And so you get uh, a fly that's, you know, counter shaded. Uh, not only in color, but also in texture, which I think is a, a really ultra-realistic kind of thing to do. And I just, you know, put a slight taper in that, tied it in 50-50, split it off to either side so that I have a nice amount of flash on the bottom. Now I cut two strands of lateral line flash. This is the, the thick version in silver. You can, again, use any color you want. The, the colors of this fly are kind of just off the cuff, if you will. They're just my intuition here. We're doing a nice chartreuse -y pink light bottom bait fish with some counter shading using hackle. So it's not uh, you know, ultra realistic. It's not designed for any uh, specific forge. It's just a suggestive reactionary fly. But the, I really like silver sides for any bait fish. Silver is a beautiful bait fish color. So that's what I'm using. And I just pinned them on the sides 50-50. Now to counter shade the fly, I'm going to come in with really long saddles. And you want to use nice thin saddles because the thinner the saddle, the less water it's going to hold, the easier it's going to be to cast. And these are mainly for counter shading. They do provide some really nice action because they kind of just float and hover. And you'll see how they swim with the, the hydraulics of the fly, the way they kind of hover over the back. But I'll show you that at the end. And what I'm going to do is I just took four of them and I lined them up so that all the tips are the same length right here. All the tips are the same length. And I'm just going to lay that down the back to the length that I want, which is right where all the flash boot ends. Then I'm just going to cut it. Now because the hackles are thin, if you've seen my, my hackle video on tying in tails, you know that the, the hackle stem is actually perpendicular to the feather fiber orientation. Uh, but because these are nice thin hackles, I don't really care 
if they all lay down perfectly, it, it doesn't really affect the, the action in the watcher that much. So don't spend, you know, forever long trying to get these all concave down. That is how I tie them. I'm tying them concave down, but they don't stay that way. It doesn't really change anything as far as fly action, so I kind of just let it do whatever it wants. Bring your thread down. You can see I still have a nice bit of room up here at the head. If you need to quickly adjust these, they don't have a tremendous amount of pressure on them, but quickly adjust those so that they're nice and evenly spaced. And then that's going to be the kind of the last place we throw some super glue on here. Just to reinforce all those fibers because the stems aren't super long. Now I'm going to come in with a veil, and you can use a lot of materials to do this veil, but uh, I want a, a slightly longer fiber just for the overall size of the fly. The overall size is pretty big. So I'm going to use Icelandic sheep hair. This is a, a really bright chartreuse color here. Now if, if you don't have Icelandic sheep, and Icelandic sheep has some downside, um, it, it tends to not because the fibers are so limp. Um, and it's mostly when you catch a fish. So you simply want to fish with a comb and when you comb it out You want to comb out the back and then the middle and then the front if you start in the front You just pull all the knots into itself and you'll never get them out So you always comb from the back and then the middle and then the front you never want to just comb from the front to back But you'll want to fish with a comb just so you can clean it out and keep the fly nice and clean I'm gonna come in and take out the majority of this under fern. You can see I have I don't know what that is, maybe an inch and a half of fibers, two inches of fibers, and I'm taking out all the fibers shorter than that two inches uh, because that's completely unnecessary water weight. This is a natural that does absorb some water. You're not going to want to leave that in there. Now the way I'm going to tie this is like the hidden bulkhead, Bob Popovic's technique. And so I'm going to take these butts, these um, Icelandic sheep butts, force them backwards, take two, three loose turns, just like with the synthetics that we did earlier. I'm going to shove my thumbnail into it and just walk this material around and pinch it to where I want it. And it's it's totally okay if this takes you, you know, this isn't uh, like a super clean technique where everything just goes where you want. It's quite a bit more difficult to do than, say, spinning bucktail around a hook shank and getting that nice and even. It's far more finicky than that, so take your time, push and pull, put down some serious thread wraps before you go and pick this out. And while I'm picking this out, I always have tension right here. You see my bobbin pulling that down. Always have tension while you're picking out a material like this, because if there's a loop in any way or if your comb gets stuck, you don't want to pull it out from your thread wraps. That's not the goal. So keep tension under that. You can see that collar kind of goes back to the thickest part of the fly. That's slightly intentional, right? I'm trying to build that nice bulky spot right over my hook bend, right in the third mark of that fly. With some nice big broad shoulders. Come in with the push tool again. And you can see how gently I'm just preening those fibers off, making sure it's nice 360 degrees, and then pull them, pull them right around your thread. That way you have a perfectly clean thread path and I'll create a little bullet dome right there. And this is how you tie like the head on a, a double deceiver with bucktail, just like that. Now I'm gonna leave that thread valley down there, pinch my thread with my thumb so it doesn't slide everywhere, and come up onto my shank. Now just like with my synthetics, if I just start wrapping and wrapping and wrapping on this thread bump, all that thread could slide off like it did earlier. Well, I don't want that because that was pretty frustrating. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean this up with a comb I'm going to hit this with some super glue real quick, and then I'm going to make another thread ramp like I did earlier. So the glue is just to help reinforce this so that that thread that's already on there doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm going to make a ramp. Now you don't want the ramp to be steep, but you want it to be gradual because we're going to have to walk a dubbing loop down the ramp, and you don't want the dubbing loop to slide. So that's I'm fairly happy with that. You can see it's not continuous, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. I'm going to come right up here and make a dubbing loop. Hold on a sec, that was a little bit long. My thread got away from me. But about a 5 inch dubbing loop, 6 inch dubbing loop. 
and I'm going to wrap that all the way back to where that collar starts. Use plenty of pressure because we're going to reef on this sucker and then get that caught in a, a dubbing loop tool. Now I'm going to, before I start all this nonsense, I'm going to come down here and clip this. So the bulkhead version is essentially a strong fuzzy fiber head. That's when we're going to work uh, in a dubbing loop. Pack on here as tight as you can and then we're going to shape it to a very similar shape to uh, Bob Popovic's bulkhead and Brad Bowen's Buford. It's one of the most beautiful blunt face, massive water push, big bulky mullet sucker chub silhouettes um, that's absolutely fantastic for tr uh, chasing predators with when those forages are, are present and they're feeding on them. And muskies, because that's what this fly is mostly geared towards, especially with the, the six on. Man, half their diets usually suckers or more. They're, they are a sucker for suckers. So that silhouette, that broadhead silhouette, is, is truly ideal and something worth emulating. Now I'm going to come in with strong fuzzy fiber. And I'm going to use, I am going to blend this with some flash because it's fun and I like to do that. <laughs> so you can come in with a little extra because you're going to lose some when you blend it. But I just want to show you, you know, relative density. I know this density is the hardest thing to convey on camera. Um, and I hate it. To, to come across the wrong way so that you overdress your fly, but I'm going to come over here and pinch this in half. That's actually a pretty good idea for how dense it is, as you guys can see that, and you should be able to see through it. It's probably, if I had to guess, maybe 30 fibers across, right? And I have it folded in half. Boom. And then I'm going to fold it in half one more time here, just like that. So I have essentially about a three inch long fiber. We've taken 30 strands and multiplied it by four, so you got about 120 strands in there. Now I'm going to take some, this is called wing and flash, it's a, it's a shredded mylar, ultra thin. I'm going to pull out just a very thin light pinch. I'm going to list these colors in the description. All the colors will be in the description for anybody who truly wants uh, to tie up this color combo. And then I'm going to take, this is like a, a little fluorescent yellow, and I'm going to blend both of those colors of flash with the strong fuzzy fiber. Now the way I blend this, and it won't probably be super focused, but it'll be close. I just pinch and pull, man. It's kind of, uh, especially right now, my hands are a little sweaty because it's warm in my basement. But all that stuff kind of sticks to your hands, and that's why you, you use more material than you need, knowing that you're going to drop some. But the one thing I have control over are the tips. So if I have tips that are uneven, I just grab the ones that are long, and I can restack them. And it's doing techniques like this that are, I think, fundamental to, to building your, your ability to manipulate and control and handle materials. I, I first learned how to do this with deer hair from watching Pat Cohen's uh, DVD series on how to stack bass bugs, and then learn how to do it with bucktail from Bob Popovic's books, uh, specifically fly design, and then you just apply it to everything else. But that's, that's the blended strung fuzzy fiber. Come in. Comb this out. Flip ends here, try to get all the loose fibers off your fingers. Comb that out. So I have, it got a little bit longer because the ends aren't perfect, but that's your, your material width. Now I'm gonna take that, and I'm not gonna put it in 50-50, but I'm gonna pinch it in my fingers and then cut it a little bit off to the side. I'm gonna do that down in my lap so it doesn't just float down here. <laughs> Um, and I didn't mention this, but I'm using a 210 flat wax nylon. Uh, you could use 210 Flymaster Plus. I wouldn't recommend GSP on this fly because the it just make it too slippery to get all the materials in place. But that's how that's going to be spaced out in here. And you want a lot of dubbing wax on that thread to, to really grip this fiber. Now you can see how this is not uh, this is asymmetrical. It's not split 50-50. And then for the blunt face of the head, it is 50-50, so that I get a really nice rounded, kind of blunt bulkhead Buford style head, obviously being synthetic, but the hydraulics are, are more or less the same. And then I always finger twist these and, and really try to work that strong fuzzy fiber nice and slow so it doesn't bunch up on itself in there. Then about three quarters of the way through my twisting process, I come in Oh man, I, I caught all my hair. Didn't mean to do that. 
I'm going to come on and extremely aggressively pick this out. So pick it out and give it a few more twists. My, my, I don't know if you saw that, but my, my dubbing loop just got significantly shorter. Uh, it's not all on frame. My dubbing loop just got significantly shorter, like it, it started to suck in on my thread. And that's kind of reaching the, the elastic limits of your thread. When your dubbing loop starts to draw itself in, that's, that's you basically reaching your elastic limit. And if you continue to twist and try to put more pressure on that than your thread can hold, you're, you're going to break your thread. So that's one of the kind of signals I look for. Now I'm going to come in and aggressively pinch and pull that to the back. Pinch and pull. You know, I'm even rubbing my fingers into it and pulling it off to the side, rubbing my fingers to create basically what ends up being a, a really dense synthetic hackle. I'm going to try to tighten up my bobbin cradle holder because this is going to be a process here. This is doing dubbing loops like this, doing dubbing brushes are, are the reason why I moved to a C-clamp because I pull up so hard. You can see that that hook flex in my vise. That's how hard I, this is a six aught, probably triple thick X hook that I have just bending. And you want it to bend continuously. You don't want it, you know, you don't want to pull down and then relax and then pull up and relax, but you want to always hold your pressure consistent all the way through, building a super dense head that's going to be as durable as you can get. And I'm just pulling these fibers back walking it, you know, a quarter of a turn at a time, half a turn at a time. Because we have a nice thick hook eye, I don't mind about getting up to the hook eye. Obviously you don't want to crowd it, but you should be able to tie this off, even if all goes poorly. <laughs> you should be able to get pretty close up here. For anybody who's struggled, uh, just working with the strong fuzzy fiber. I hope that the new camera angle kind of helps. And I'm going to come over here and trap my, my thread once, trap it twice, and the, the biggest, the best thing you can do with a dubbing loop is pull up with your, your dubbing loop and pull down with your thread. So up with the loop, down with the thread at the same time. It gives you all the leverage in the world to suck that securely behind your, your eye and build a little bit of thread up in front of it. Build a nice little thread head right here. Force that initial uh, fiber kind of backwards. And then do a four turn whip finish. Now I'm going to come in with the, the big fat bristles on my comb here. And I always do fat ones first because uh, it's, it's just going to gra grab less fibers. It's not going to be super aggressive on everything. Man, that fly has some serious bulk, man. I love that. Bulk without bulk. And then I switch to my thin side. Get a nice, nice brushed out head so all the fibers are going straight out. Stroke that once or twice and then I basically just rest my scissors here at a slight angle and rotate that vise and round the head out. I like a nice kind of round head. But the trimming doesn't need to be so severe because it's obviously uh, intended as a bulky hot, uh, bulky fly. <laughs> and you want a nice round symmetrical head. It's gonna help it track the truest if you leave it kind of just nice and symmetrical. You can go a little shorter on the bottom so you have a little bit more fibers on top. That'll actually help it track the truest, but symmetry especially left to right is extremely important so that it just has equal hydraulic pressure on the head there you don't want spinning spinning is very bad that'll happen if you trim one side more than the other so shoot for round if anything that'll be a, the best case ontario which is a trailer park boys reference don't think i'm I said that intentionally. Best case scenario. Okay, there everybody knows now. <laughs> Best case Ontario. Anyway, I digress. So, sculpt that. If you want to get really technical, you can make that look really nice by your threads, but it's not important. No point in screwing it up now. But that is your finished. Man, that looks sweet. Turn off the light here a little bit. Check that out. That is your bulkhead all spark. Now the last thing I'll do is obviously 
protect your, your thread wraps right here at the head. Hit those guys in some super glue. And you can just get glue all over that hook eye, don't worry about it. It's such a big hook eye, it's never going to fill. And if it does even threaten to fill, uh, fill up on you, you just shove a bodkin through the, the hook eye and I kind of push that the glue into that first little synthetic right there. Shape that back. Sweet. Now, I'm going to show you guys some stills of this guy. Kind of highlight the color combo that I chose here. Again, the colors are going to be listed in the description. Um, and then uh, let's go fishing.